Ciao from Pietro, ciao from the limited edition. We are live today from a slightly different location from my house, <laughs> if that matters. Uh, but I have good news for you. Today I will have live some of the most interesting, you know, uh, young watchmakers that are, you know, have been uh, coming into the scene over the last uh, couple of years, I have to say. Somebody that has become a friend as well, somebody that uh, I feel we're really tuned in uh, the same space in so many, at so many levels, not only from the watchmaking level. I started from loving his work. I knew about his past at Audemars Piguet as one of the master watchmakers there. Uh, he then obviously developed as one of the best finishers out there. And we know that uh, a lot of the value of uh, timepieces is linked to the time and the techniques used for the finishing. And he is definitely a master. I don't know if he will disclose uh, the many uh, other watchmakers he's been collaborating with because at times watchmakers would get in touch with him exactly to have to get his skills as a finisher on their own productions. But I'm going too far ahead. Let me introduce the guest today. Uh, we're going to have Philip Narbel. Uh, I have the great pleasure of uh, getting Nar uh, Philip with us. In... Uh, uh, very shortly. So again, from Audemars Piguet all the way to um, uh, to developing his own creature, which was the Roots uh, timepiece that was launched last year. Philippe, how are you? I'm fine. Thank you, Pietro. Uh, that's a pleasure to meet you again and to see you. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. I'm uh, in a different location because I'm on my way to Ireland to the Festival of Time. Uh, where oh, wow. Our friend Johnny is starting uh, today the operations over there. Uh, yes, an incredible, incredible array of watchmakers. I know you can't be there this year. You were there last year and we yes. had a great time. Yes, it was a wonderful festival for me and, and, uh, and a lot of, uh, yes, uh, and a lot of, uh, of un un incredible watchmakers also. Uh, and Johnny is an, un un an incredible guy for sure. He's a Legend is a legend, but Philip, today is all. Uh, today is about you. I think uh, you've been fantastic in showcasing your work, uh, especially on your Instagram channel. I invite everybody that hasn't seen uh, Philip uh, uh, working. You can get incredible videos, or you know, uh, very detailed about you know the way Philip works and what watchmaking means for for Philip. Philip, I said about your past at Audemars Piguet. Yeah. Uh, as a young watchmaker, how important yeah. was that to what Philippe is today? Est-ce que c'est est -ce est possible de répondre en français? Uh, j'ai dit de ton passé à Audemars Piguet. Ah, yeah, you can answer. Yeah, okay. Okay. You can, yes, you can answer in French, definitely. Okay. I, and I will translate. Ok, je te remercie. C'est plus facile en français pour moi. Um, alors, bah, c'est une marque qui a changé ma vie. C'est très clair. Audemars Piguet a changé ma vie, c'est très clair. C'est parce qu'à 29 ans, moi j'étais bijoutier et je n'ai jamais rêvé d'être horloger. C'était une idée qui ne m'était jamais venue à l'esprit. Quand j'étais 29, j'étais un jeweler, en fait. J'étais spécialisé dans les jeweurs. Je ne pensais pas que j'étais un devenu un watchmaker. C'est ça, puis ben. Euh, et... Et puis ben, la bijouterie, ça ne suffisait pas, donc j'ai dû euh, en fait, me poser la question sur mon avenir. Et puis, et puis j'ai eu cette, cette, euh, euh, et puis eu cette euh, grande, euh, puis cette grande chance euh, en, en, de, de pouvoir faire un apprentissage en tant qu'horloger euh, chez Audemars Piguet. So jewelry was not enough for me clearly. So I had the great opportunity to uh, be an apprentice at uh, Audemars Piguet, so I took that opportunity and it changed my life. Ouais. Et donc après j'ai pu euh, j'ai pu aller dans un euh, en fait dans un grand nombre d'ateliers euh, chez AP. J'ai bossé comme horloger, j'ai fait de l'extraplage, j'ai fait des choses assez fines. Euh, et puis après je m'ennuyais un peu, alors j'ai eu envie d'aller à la décoration. When I joined Audemars Piguet. I uh, specialized in the flat uh, movement um, and the extra plat, so the ultra thin. 
And then I felt that my passion was really for the finishing, for the decoration of the movement. C'est ça. Donc j'ai pu avoir aussi cette 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 grande chance bah, d'aller dans l'atelier de décoration où on faisait l'anglage à la lime, on faisait les angles rentrants, sortants, et puis après aussi la découpe au boxhill. So when I was uh, uh, just in my early 30s, to have access to the Audemars Piguet finishing department, decoration department, was a blessing because I could see immediately live how they were actually carrying out uh, fine decorations such as uh, the anglage, beveling, uh, you know, interior angles, ex external exterior angles, etc., etc., which, if you're familiar to the work of Philippe, of course, are the DNA of what Philippe does today. Et puis, ce qui était, ce qui était marquant, c'est que mon responsable d'atelier, c'est la personne qui a, qui a fait le design c'est à propos du double balancier squelette et puis on en a parlé enfin, enfin moi j'ai bossé sur ce modèle là pendant longtemps chez Audemars Piguet puis après aussi en tant que sous-traitant so and the person that was ahead in the atelier of the decoration workshop was actually the person that developed the double balance uh, uh, skeleton for Audemars Piguet which is a, a very important piece for uh, for Philippe if Philippe really specialized in it Uh, and also as a supplier, when then Philippe went independent, in his independent career, as a supplier, he kept working on these obviously very complex uh, movements and mechanisms. Uh, C'est pour ça que cette entreprise, donc de Marpillet, a vraiment changé ma vie, parce qu'en premier, j'ai pu apprendre le métier d'horloger, et grâce à elle, j'ai euh, euh, pu, euh, 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 après, bien, euh, créer ma propre entreprise et puis c'était il y a 9 ans j'ai quitté au démarche piguet et puis mon gros client c'était au démarche piguet so it's an amazing story with the marque piguet because obviously i became a watchmaker thanks to the marque piguet i specialized and then when i went independent i became a client a supplier of the de marque piguet so this was nine years ago and ever since uh, philippe has been working as a supplier uh, for the marque piguet Philippe, spécialisant still in decoration and finishing. Yeah, 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 of course. So, gone a long way now. I'm not going to ask your age, but uh, we're talking uh, years and years working in uh, in decoration and finishing. I know you're young, so that's why I don't ask you the, the age. I can uh, speak about my my age. I don't have any problem. <laughs> <laughs> not yet, of course. Okay. Of course. Listen, Thanks. listen. Many know you about. Uh, about uh, your decor decorative skills and the master yeah. of uh, finishes you also do classes for our watchmakers for other watchmakers and you also collaborate at different levels with many other watchmakers uh, what can you tell about that bien c'est sûr que c'était il y a deux trois ans euh, j'avais des horlogers indépendants qui me demandaient si c'était euh, possible qui, et puis bah, qui viennent ici en stage parce qu'il fallait qu'ils pratiquent la décoration. So, I I et je disais oui. Since a few years ago, uh, watchmakers have been asking um, Philippe to actually go to his workshop as apprentices to be able to learn uh, the fine decoration and finishing. Of course, we're talking about the dif different level, high level of decoration and finishing. So, three years ago, you, you said three, four years ago. Bah, uh, et puis donc, euh, ça me prenait quand même du temps et donc je me suis dit, eh bien, la meilleure idée, c'est qu'on résume ça en fait en une semaine, et puis on crée une masterclass, et puis les gens s'inscrivent, et puis moi je je mets un focus à propos de la formation, à propos de cette semaine-là. So the demand was so high for these, you know, movement makers or engineers, watchmakers more specialized in the engineering, uh, wanting to learn uh, decorative techniques, that he had to organize this work. And he created actually a package of one week that is called Masterclass. And this package of one week became the product that uh, Philippe has been able to offer to these watchmakers to uh, complete their, their profile. Now, because uh, Philippe, every watchmaker has a different set of skills. Now, some of them are more on the engineering, some more of them are more on the designing, some of them are more on the creative concept, and some of them are more specialized in the finishing and the, and the decoration. Alors c'est c'est tout à fait juste. On arrive avec un background qui est différent. Euh, on a des talents différents, on a des affinités différentes. Et puis c'est vrai qu'on est dans cette époque où l'horloger il a envie de limer, il a envie de décorer. 
Et donc, ben, en fait, ils viennent et ils se confrontent parfois un petit peu à leurs limites. Et puis, il y en a des qui se révèlent avec un grand so, talent. Every watchmaker comes with a different background, like artists, you know, it's obviously artistry that we're talking about. Uh, and, and, and some of them are really hoping and wishing to absorb from other watchmakers the skills where they feel they're not as, you know, as prepared as, as they maybe are on the en at the engineering level or mechanical level uh, or anything else, any other element. So this is where Philippe has been really making an impact in, uh, in helping uh, watchmakers to complete their sets of, wo uh, sets of work. <laughs> Ce qui, est, ce qui est important de dire, c'est que la pensée derrière, c'est de, c'est de détruire la culture du secret. Tu sais, on, on fracasse la culture du secret à grands coups de marteau, et puis on partage tout, on vend nos propres outils, on montre tout. Il n'y a aucun secret this chez Manufactor is, uh, et dans ces masterclass. This is very interesting. So, the, uh, as a supplier, the company that uh, Philippe set up, set up is called Manufactor. Manufactor and uh, they are offering these master classes and they go exactly the opposite way or some old school way of seeing watchmaking it's all based on sharing competencies sharing skills for the sake of uh, helping watchmaking to develop uh, in a large in a broad in a wide uh, way so philip sees other watchmakers as friends no philip you see them as friends you share your competencies and probably they share that they share theirs c'est tout à fait ça, parce que moi, moi euh, je considère qu'on fait partie d'un même écosystème et le but à atteindre, c'est qu'il y ait plein de belles montres qui se fassent et qui se vendent. Le but, c'est que les collectionneurs, ils aient le choix entre un grand nombre de, de, de choses qui sont bien faites, qui sont bien designées, qui sont bien décorées et puis c'est et puis c'est bon pour tout le monde. Si, si, enfin, en fait, on fait partie du même écosystème. The goal is really to enhance uh, independent artisan watchmaking. Uh, so to create an ecosystem where every watchmaker has access and can, you know, together with the expertise of other watchmakers, produce the best possible product that you can imagine. Because by doing so, artisan uh, watchmaking is enhanced and uh, people out there, collectors out there, will get a much better product in the end than if they were just relying on the skills, the original skills of one or the other watchmaker. So it's really, it's quite, it's a very progressive approach, uh, uh, Philip, because when you were at AP or when I started in the watchmaking industry, it wasn't exactly the same. There was a lot no. of uh, keeping the secrets for yourself. No. Uh, et, et, et puis on va même aller un peu plus loin. Là, je fais un peu du teasing, mais c'est qu'il y a... Uh, en, en, en fait, au mois d'août, on a fait une masterclass et, et, et puis c'était dans les locaux de Manufactor et, et puis l'un des horlogers indépendants dont je tais le nom mais, mais, et, euh, a participé et puis m'a demandé si en novembre, parce qu'en novembre, en fait, il doit sortir cinq montres et il m'a posé la question s'il pouvait venir faire le travail chez nous. C'est lui qui vient faire le travail, mais chez nous, dans notre écosystème à nous. Yeah. Et moi, j'ai dit oui, évidemment. It's, uh, it's the opposite of, you know, obviously the uh, artist secret that was so precious back in the days. Uh, it, ca it goes to the point where Philip has even been able to host uh, other watchmakers in his premises with their own tools, with their own uh, gearing to be able to uh, assemble and create their watches within uh, Philip's premises where they could then complete the work with some nice finishing and decoration. And that's amazing, Philip. The only thing you can't share with us, though, is uh, who you've been helping, uh, or is there is there some names that you can make, and uh, you know some friends that you can mention uh, that where people can go and check out your uh, contribution to their timepieces. Alors, le, le, euh, le, euh, les quelques noms que je peux citer qui étaient, par exemple, à la masterclass, euh, et, euh, et puis ben il y avait la session d'il y a deux ans, c'était Marie-Laure Lintrich euh, de, des Pays-Bas. Euh, il y avait aussi euh, euh, M. Ketelars qui est venu au mois d'août. Il y avait aussi Jack Elam euh, qui est en Angleterre, M. Matthews qui, qui, est, qui est en train de nous écouter là. Hello Jack. Euh, il y a aussi Florent Le.
Quand tu avec qui on travaille énormément, enfin, en fait, on fait sa décoration, mais on, on fait vraiment partie du même écosystème. Euh... So let you, let you say the names one after the other one, so I don't need to, okay. uh, to translate because you're just going through the names. So uh, Florian Lecomte. Uh, uh, aussi Ketelars, au Pays-Bas, Oltin Trich, aussi Sartori Biard. Euh, au Papi Burkus euh, en République Tchèque, euh, il, il, y a aussi, euh, il y a aussi Garic qui, est, qui nous a envoyé son, son horloger en masterclass. Euh, je n'ai pas préparé mes réponses, il n'y a pas tout qui est dans ma tête, mais, mais non, ça, non, ça, 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 ça fait déjà une, some... une petite the idea, série. L'idée est de donner. Uh, people that are uh, hopefully watching this and will watch this, some names where they can go and find out your work. And again, it's not, the idea is not that, you know, they have, uh, how can I say, taken your work, but it's really, it's a result of sharing and the fact that these watchmakers are really in a friendly way, uh, giving yeah. to each other and receiving from each other. I really, yeah. I really like this. But we are, I think this is a very good introduction to explain who Philip is. And he gives a little bit is uh, some parts of his character. You are a, a man that likes contact, likes uh, exchanging in life in general. No, Philippe, you have many interests beside watchmaking, and yeah. we can tell from this approach that that you have to watchmaking. But today is a big day, uh, yeah. Yeah. Philippe. You you came out last year with the launch of your Roots, which is your signature piece yeah. that uh, um, was launched. Uh, yeah, a year ago, a year and a half. Yeah, approximately. Approximately. Yeah. 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 Je vais parler en français, No, pas, uh, absolument, pas de souci. And today you're launching the skeleton. So if you go on the limited edition now, Instagram account, and very soon on the website, and I'm sure on Philippe's uh, Instagram account as well, you will yes. see the first images of this incredible creature, mm -hmm. the skeleton version. Of the first roots that was your de debut debut piece, yeah. um, how how happy are you of what you're seeing now, uh, and you know how the watch looks and what you have created? Alors je je je, je suis euh, je suis confiant parce que moi j'aime je suis très fier de cette montre I'm very et proud dans la pelouse et dans la pelouse même si elle plaisait à personne d'autre que moi, c'est pas grave. <rire> Parce que moi, je suis amoureux de ce modèle. Je suis amoureux de ce squelette. Euh, je suis très fier. Je, je trouve incroyable que ça soit sorti de, de ma tête. Euh, mais j'espère so évidemment que d'autres vont, vont trouver sympathique. Je suis tellement fier de cette watch que, honnêtement, même si la watch n'était pas going to appeal to anyone else, je serais so happy anyway, parce que je ne peux pas croire. I managed to create something that really represents me. Uh, but of course, it would be amazing if I found, you know, collectors uh, appreciating uh, this, this piece uh, uh, in the future. C'est important de comprendre que, que je suis au début de ma carrière en tant qu'horloger indépendant. Et moi, je suis là pour les, les 25 prochaines années. Donc, j'ai 46 ans, hein, je le dis. Euh, je vais en tout cas bosser jusqu'à 70. En tout cas, donc moi je suis là pour les 25 prochaines années. Yeah. Et in many, in many allez, ways, allez. it's important to say that I'm I'm only a young watchmaker. I'm 46 this year, and I'm definitely there for the long run. And this is just the debut. And I yeah, I guess this goes with the fact that you have many ideas in mind and a very clear idea of what's your way forward as a watchmaker. C'est c'est tout à fait ça. Et puis ce qui est important de comprendre, c'est que j'ai compris que la course, elle sera longue. C'est un marathon, ce n'est pas un sprint. C'est 25 marathons de suite. Euh, et, et donc là, je suis très content de cette montre, mais en même temps, je sais que c'est que, ce qui, que si ça s'inscrit dans une continuité que cette montre, elle aura du sens. Alors, oui. je suis content et en même temps, je, je reste calme. I understand very well that this is a, a marathon I am starting and it's not a sprint. Uh, I see the development of my work in the long run. And uh, I know that all these watches, the roots last year and this watch, the skeleton this year will be better understood when a clear 
path, a path, a pattern and journey will be built around my work. And I'm here for the next 30 years to show what I'm capable of. Yeah, it's a, je pense pas que je vais designer une autre boîte que celle-ci parce qu'il y a parfois des gens qui me demandent ah Philippe quand c'est que tu fais une montre ronde ah il va falloir attendre longtemps parce que parce que j'ai beaucoup d'idées pour ce design là et j'ai commencé par quelque chose de simple de très simple mais c'était voulu et puis petit à petit je vais et je vais venir avec des complications mais étape par étape I uh, I get asked every day when I will start developing a round case because we have a little obsession with round cases in watchmaking. I wanted to start with my own cushion shape uh, that you know represent me the best, and I have so many ideas on how to uh, uh, to uh, adapt this case with uh, eventually complications that I'm going to develop in the future. Uh, I have so many of those that I don't think I will do a round case uh, in the near future, but you never know. Uh, later on. Peut-être. C'est c'est vrai que j'ai voulu commencer en fait avec la route. En fait, il n'y a même pas de, de petites secondes, il y a juste l'aiguille des heures et des minutes. C'est très minimaliste, très introspectif. Et puis ben là, la squelette, on avance un peu dans la complexité. Euh, et j'aimerais bien faire un exemple start... là. J'aimerais bien to... faire un cube. Vas-y. Sorry, I wanted to start very minimalistic with the, the roots. So the, the, the first uh, collection I launched last year, very minimalistic because it had to represent the essence of my work. And now I'm building on top of that. The first one would be obviously a skeleton where obviously your knowledge and your story has been in the decoration and in the finishing, in the interior angles, in the exterior angles, um, Philippe. So you have put that second part of your of your of your knowledge and skill set in this uh, skeleton piece yeah c'est 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 sûr que bah là c'est c'est vraiment une montre où j'exprime un petit peu mes mes 25 dernières années en tant que bijoutier après en tant qu'horloger et puis vraiment bah enfin j'ai été imprimé euh, chez AP par l'idée du squelette et puis je c'était c'était une évidence que avec la route après, j'allais faire un squelette avec les mêmes bases, et puis tout ça était déjà en train de cogiter depuis quelques années. It's obvious. Uh, it's obvious. The uh, the skeleton is really the the the, the recap of my uh, 25 years in the world of uh, of watchmaking. Uh, but it's a it's a starting it's a starting point in uh, in many other in many other ways. Uh, so, uh, Philippe, to help our collectors understand, so there will be two versions of the skeleton, correct? Oui. Oui, c'est juste. Alors, euh, la première version, c'est celle euh, que, vous que vous pouvez aussi voir actuellement avec le compte Narbalenko. Ça, c'est la version en fait en acier avec le mouvement qui est gris anthracite. Euh, et là, on est très minimaliste aussi dans les couleurs. Et vraiment, les aiguilles se voient très bien. Je suis très fier des aiguilles parce que c'est un vrai défi de faire des aiguilles qui se voient et avec lesquelles on peut lire l'heure euh, avec un squelette. C'est pas évident. So there is a first version that you can see now on uh, uh, Philippe Narmel and the limited edition account, which is a, a steel version with the anthracite uh, finishing of the skeleton movement. With these uh, pink gold hands, uh, Philippe says he's really proud of these pink gold hands because uh, just the work to get those hands finished in that particular way uh, is a masterpiece uh, on, its, uh, on its own, never mind the rest of the uh, movement. I really like, if I may, Philippe, the finishing of the case as well. Yeah. How you have kept that uh, mix between the, the mirror polished and the, uh, I wouldn't say matte because it's not really matte, but like a, uh, I would say, uh, I would say uh, brushed, brushed feel to part of, uh, part of the cases. Alors là, bah là, là euh, je remercie vivement la société Voutilain and Katin qui est, qui, qui s'occupe du, du ouais, qui, qui, qui s'est occupé du polissage de la boîte, ils font vraiment un travail euh, top. So in terms of the finishing of the case, uh, Philippe wants to thank obviously Kari Vutilainen's uh, company, uh, Vutilainen and Katan. Uh, they have taken charge of the work on the case and uh, it, I have to say it's, it's beautiful. Also with the integration with the bracelet is uh, seamless. Like you feel like there are no there are no lags, of course, and you feel like the, uh, the the strap is actually totally completely integrated, and it's deceiving how when you 
If you go on the limited edition, you'll see a screenshot of this timepiece. You see how well it sits on the wrist as well. Forget about, you know, the round, round watches are round watches, of course. Um, sometimes we, uh, um, square watches lack some kind of balance on the wrist. Go and have a look, a look to the wrist shot that we just published today mm -hmm. on our weather limited edition of Coda UK. Mm -hmm. I don't have a big wrist uh, at all. I have a medium, medium wrist and you see how, mm -hmm. how well it fits. Um, we're going to answer some of the questions as well. Sorry, Thank Philippe. You. We are live with Philippe yeah. Mel from Switzerland, a uh, ramping watchmaker, uh, one of the uh, probably best uh, finishers and decor and de decorator of uh, of fine mechanical movements out there. Uh, Philippe has launched his um, his brand uh, last year and he's coming out today. Preview on the limited edition with his new skeleton uh, timepiece. One version is in steel and the second version, Philippe. Et puis la deuxième version est en or et et puis la carrure est en or rose avec la lunette et le fond qui sont en or gris et le mouvement est aussi doré 5 n et là je trouve intéressant parce que autant la route que la squelette en acier c'est très c'est très sobre en termes de couleur on est dans le sombre et là gentiment on arrive avec la couleur et ça me plaît beaucoup avec un bracelet bleu qui est fait par les ateliers du bracelet à genève euh, là ça commence à en fait on monte un petit peu dans les un petit peu dans le jeu des couleurs It's a... So the second version is obviously uh, the uh, uh, skeleton gold, which uh, you'll see the pictures very soon. But uh, uh, obviously, uh, it's a completely gold um, gold movement uh, with uh, a gold case as well. And the work of the finishing, I have to say, Philip comes uh, comes out even more dramatically uh, from this piece in the gold in the gold version. So I. Uh, I don't necessarily have a favorite. I don't like favorite games, but the gold is like uh, jaw dropping. So my jaw went down when I saw the when I saw the gold. Uh, really, really good. And uh, the difference in price is not uh, incredibly high. Do you want to mention the prices for the steel and the gold version? Absolutely. The the price of the version acier is at 62,000, and the price of the version or is at 82,000. So in steel, we're looking at 62,000 Swiss francs, excluding tax, and the gold is 72,000, excluding, excluding tax. And, uh, 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 et c'est 82, c'est pas 72. So it's so 62 and 82. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, so 62 yeah. on the steel and 82 on the gold, yeah. uh, Swiss francs, excluding tax. And you have also revised the prices of the roots, which is uh, still available. It's your... Yeah signature yeah, piece of course. again the minimalistic piece that we we told and uh, what's the new price uh on est passé à 37000 euh parce qu'on a pu recalculer certains frais de production enfin on a pu un petit peu bidouiller différemment et là en fait on arrive à à proposer cette montre à à au prix de 37 yeah and so 37 and you um also you have some economies of scales uh, scales now with the production of the skeleton so philip was explaining that these economies of scale have uh have allowed him to decrease the price of the roots so the debut piece which is now at 37 000, uh pounds uh, sorry swiss francs excluding tax now we have a few a uh, couple of questions um, yeah. do you have a picture or design uh or a drawing of the of the gold version, so we show that as well uh, around you. Or is it something that uh, is 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 difficult? Um, uh, J'ai pas compris. Que tu veux un dessin de la version en or ou une oui, photo? Oui, juste une image, une image de la, de la version or si tu l'as, juste pour montrer. Mm. Euh, parce que non, je l'ai pas. Euh, okay. ah, 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 si, attends, attends, attends. Tu attends deux secondes. Perfect. And I'll find I'll find some questions from uh, uh, these lovely people that have been following our chat. Thank you very much. As you know, we try on a weekly basis to bring, especially on our YouTube channel. But today is uh, uh, as, as a surprise. We wanted to come back on on Instagram, and I'm glad to see that there's quite a few uh, people interested. Um, your questions for Philip. Philip is really somebody that can give you uh, some insights, some serious insights from the world of 
artisan watchmaking, being an artisan himself, being a supplier of one of the biggest uh, brands and having been involved with one of the biggest brands as well uh, actively for the last eight years. Here we go with the, with the version in, uh, in, uh, in gold. And we so donc, j'ai fait des petits livres et puis dedans, on a des croquis, on a, on a des dessins, on a en fait, un certain nombre de choses. Et puis, oh, et puis c'était la version. I'm waiting for a few more of those. But very yeah, no problem. In the, in the gold version, as you can see, there is a nice contrast between the frame of the case, which is, uh, which is rose gold, and the bezel, if we can call it the bezel. Uh, which is in white gold and the same contrast you can be found in the movement and in the finishing of the movement with the hands that are obviously uh, negative to the uh, pink gold finishing of the movement itself. Absolutely majestic. I love it. Uh, we have a first question, um, oui. uh, Philippe, uh, from uh, one of our listeners. What advice would you give to someone that wants to be an independent, I guess, watchmaker? Um... Être passionné, ne, ne pas avoir peur de travailler beaucoup, mais ça c'est des conseils un peu standards. Mais being, euh, passion, being passionate and, and, and enjoy working a lot. Et avoir un bon, bon réseau. Je pense que c'est important d'avoir un bon réseau et d'être patient. Il faut viser le long terme. Il faut pas viser le, faut pas good, viser le court terme. Have a good network, which comes with the sharing, I guess, Philip. That is the, your your attitude and. Uh, and being and being patient um so yes la vidéo est inversée évidemment uh, désolé there are things on the instagram that we can't yet manage properly i'll have a word with the mark zuckerberg though because uh, it's about time that instagram up, up, upgrades and updates a little bit because on youtube things are normally much uh, easier uh, so yes mb watches la vidéo est inversée so oui, you oui. have to imagine the right way around um, own second is it possible or necessary to create a movement from absolute scratch uh philip there's a lot no. of uh debate no. in house not in house etc etc moi j'ai dû le faire parce que je pouvais pas imaginer faire un mouvement rond dans une boîte carrée c'est ça donc moi j'avais pas le choix mais on peut créer un très grand nombre de très, très belles montres en travaillant avec des mouvements existants ça c'est mon avis euh, Yeah, so his point of view is that is, uh, yes, producing an in-house movement is something that is feasible and, uh, you know, uh, requires a skill set that, you know, with time, uh, Philippe definitely masters. But if he is really inspired in working on movements that already exist and completely revolutionize them. And this is where you see more the uh, decorative finishing side to you, Philippe, than the engineering, the pure engineering, no? Yeah. yeah. Alors, et puis, ben juste à propos de la question d'avant, euh, oui. moi, ce qui est important, c'est que la montre, elle ait quelque chose à raconter. Il faut que la... Euh, c'est comme dans une librairie. Et, en, euh, et, et, en, euh, et quand on va dans une librairie, il y a des livres partout, mais ce n'est pas grave parce qu'ils qu ont quelque chose à raconter. Et si la montre, elle a quelque chose à raconter, que ce soit en, en fait, un mouvement in-house ou pas, on s'en fiche. Il faut que yeah. la montre, elle yeah. parle. For Philippe, the most important thing is that a watch has to tell a story that is uh, veritable. So um, it, it doesn't really matter if um, movement is in house or not in house, or if it's a, a re, a, a, you know, a, a revisiting of an existing movement, like in this case. But it has to go with the concept and with the idea that the watchmaker wants to express, and the story has to be uh, compelling. Um, So, des complications dans le futur, des développements, oui, so, so, oui, any, oui, alors, complications, uh, any complications that uh, you're planning absolument. for the future and developments. Absolument, moi j'aime euh, beaucoup leur sautante, j'aime euh, vraiment beaucoup les montres avec des guichets, où il n'y a plus d'aiguilles, où c'est des guichets, c'est des chiffres, ça, ça me plaît vraiment beaucoup. Et puis sur ce design-là, et, et puis j'aimerais avec une boîte peut-être un peu plus fine, euh, j'aimerais indiquer l'heure autrement. Et là, il n'y a plus de cadran, il y a juste euh, euh, en fin de compte du métal et des guichets. Euh, ça, c'est l'une des complications. Évidemment qu'on va faire l'heure sautante aussi version squelette. On verra un peu à travers, mais pas tout. Euh, ça, c'est clair. 
Après, moi, j'aime les complications qui sont historiques. Euh, le quantième perpétuel, ça, ça me parle beaucoup. Euh, mais je ne vais jamais faire de tourbillon. Je le dis d'ailleurs. Je, je signe en bas de la feuille, euh, pas de tourbillon chez Philippe. So, uh, yeah, Philippe has a multitude of ideas. He's really inspired by jumping hours as a complication, which is a complication I really love as well, Philippe. And I don't think there is enough jumping hours on the, on the market. Uh, so jumping hour could be one. Uh, also, Philippe likes the, um, uh, the classic complications such as the perpetual calendar, for example, but it doesn't like necessarily a tourbillon or he doesn't feel a tourbillon would be for him. So he, there will not be a tourbillon most probably uh, ever in the future, uh, but we'll <laughs> see. Uh, there is again the question about, is there any advice you can give to a young watchmaker? But you just, uh, we just answered that unless you want to, to add anything uh, to it, uh, Philippe. C'était quoi la question, pardon? Et il y a encore la question par rapport à quel, a, quel conseil tu donnerais à, à, à un, jeune, un jeune horologer, en fait. Mais on, a, on vient de répondre ça, au moins que tu aies quelque chose d'autre à ajouter. Non, il faut, il, il faut aimer son métier beaucoup et puis, euh, ne pas, et puis viser le long terme. Il faut, pas, voilà, il faut need, avoir le temps. Il faut être passionné passionate and to think long term, to think long term. Uh, yeah. So that's the, that's the most important thing. Uh, I've seen another one, I think. Uh, yeah, any re recommendation on who's doing a proper jumping hour? It's my next purchase, uh, definitely. Uh, you just have to wait some years and you will buy mine. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I can give a, I can give a little uh, a little uh, advice yeah. on that one. Uh, I think if you're looking at a great jumping hour, you can't get wrong if you go for the Sven Anderson. I think yeah. Philippe will agree with that. Yeah. And Sven Anderson jumping hour is a classic and it's probably, I don't know, it's the first jumping hour I remember, you know, in my lifetime. Uh, I'm sure there were probably uh, some more in, in the past, but uh, yeah, you can't get wrong with that. Uh, with the Anderson jumping hour, but yeah. it's a good question because there's not enough jumping hours, so it's probably a complication that needs uh, needs to be developed. Um, so yes, it is allowed to ask questions in the chat, so feel free, uh, feel free. We have another five minutes, I would say, and okay. uh, uh, and yes, for yeah, reservoir is another one, absolutely. A reservoir on the more of a affordable side is definitely. Uh, a good uh, French French brand making a good jumping hour. I think they use a La Jupere uh, caliber for that, and it's uh, it's it's nice, it's affordable, it's well made. Um, what do you recommend to practice anglage? Anglage beveling, of course. What do you recommend? Uh, a steady uh, hand, a steady uh, hand, uh, I guess. Uh, 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 en premier, il faut des bons outils uh, parce que la décoration c'est en premier. Euh, utiliser les bons outils. Alors, ben, nous, on les explique, on les vend. Enfin, ça fait partie de la masterclass. Euh, si tu peux avoir quelqu'un qui te montre un peu la bonne position, un peu comment se tenir, un peu comment aussi contrôler son travail, ça peut aider si tu as quelqu'un qui peut un peu t'introduire. Euh, so si tu es tout seul dans ton coin, c'est plus difficile. First of all, you need the good tools. Good tools before even you start before starting the, the job. Uh, at the same time, you have to be um, you have to be with the right people that can show you how to get introduced to uh, an art. No, obviously the art of anglage, the art of beveling, uh, very very important. Uh, there's another question. This is a bit of a uh, so watchmaker Stevenson saying he wants to quit Gronefeld and he wants to join Odema Piguet. So how can he join Odema Piguet, uh, <laughs> Philip? Euh, et, et, et puis la question c'est comment se faire engager chez AP uh, Yes, uh, comment, oui, il veut, il veut quitter, il est chez Gronefeld, il veut ah. quitter, il veut, il veut rejoindre Audemars Piguet. Ok, uh, bah, il peut m'écrire un email et puis euh, je, je le mettrai en contact avec les quelques personnes que je connais encore là-bas. So, just, just send a message Mais to uh, Philippe. C'est la bonne période, hein. <rire> c'est vraiment la bonne période. Send a message to Philippe. Uh, Philippe is also very close to the former CEO of Audemars Piguet, I know. 
uh, and send a message to him and he will put you in touch. It's a good time as well for watchmakers. There is something to be said, Philip. It's a great time to actually decide to become a watchmaker because, I mean, at the limited edition, we see it every day. Artisan watchmaking is thriving, thriving, absolutely thriving. For the brands, there are a bit of up and downs because sometimes brands, they produce too many watches yeah. and all of a sudden, you know, the market goes down. But for the artisans producing small quantities, it's still a great time. C est, c est, tu as parfaitement résumé. Quand on, quand on fait des montres à la main, on est limité par notre savoir-faire. On ne peut pas en produire plein, 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 plein. Et des gens qui seront attirés avec ce travail qui est fait, et qui, est, qui est quelque chose d'artisanal, il y en aura toujours. Mais parce que le but, ce n'est pas d'en vendre des mille et des mille. Et donc, Absolument. oui, tu as raison. Absolument. Philippe is saying yes, he totally agrees that. Uh small quantities making in an artisanal way is really the essence of watchmaking and there will always be somebody out there appreciating that kind of work um obviously not so much uh when things are done industrially in big quantities where of course then you depend on the on the situation of the market which could, which could be in expansion or in uh, in uh, or the opposite ce qui est intéressant aussi c'est que le métier d'horloger Actuellement, avec l'intelligence artificielle, il y a plein de métiers qui vont changer. Mais les métiers manuels, il faut revenir à ça. Il faut revenir à ça. We have to go back to the manual, uh, the manual um, uh, crafts. Yeah. Also because the world is going digital. The, go the world is going more and more aut automatic, uh, you know, from, on the automatic side. Um, uh, I truly believe that as well. And as you know, Philip, we have created the limited edition based exactly on that. Yeah. It's the human, human craft yeah, that sure. are the future in so many ways. Two quick questions and then we yeah. close this live. Uh, okay. Est-ce que vous pensez collaborer avec des maisons horlogères pour présenter des modèles inédits? Will you collaborate with some brands to present some special models with brands? Uh, euh, ça dépend. Si on me pose la question, s'ils si, si viennent me chercher, pourquoi pas Mais moi, j'ai plutôt envie de faire des collaborations avec mes copains qui sont des horlogers indépendants euh, et pas forcément des marques. Ça, so oui, maybe, ça. Si une brand comes with an interesting project, maybe I may consider it. But uh, instinctively, I feel like I want to collaborate with my friends, um, with my friends, the independent watchmakers. Uh, last question from own second. I have a prediction. Big brands will slowly fade away. What do you think? Tu penses que les grandes marques vont disparaître? No. No, no. Je pense pas. No, he doesn't think so. I doesn't think so. Uh, oh, there's more questions. So let's do another couple. How open should the independent watch make it be to bespoke and personalization? Uh, que, uh, tu peux le faire en français? Que, tu penses qu'un maître horloger doit être ouvert à la personnalisation, customisation des, des éditions des produits? Ça, c'est une bonne question. Euh, et puis, dans ma montre, et puis, il y a donc en fait, un composant qui est donc le couvre-rocher, qui est le terrain de jeu où on peut customiser, on peut personnaliser. Mais moi, je ne vais pas personnaliser la montre entière. Je vais, je vais avoir ce terrain de jeu-là où, oui, j'ai envie de. Mais le reste de la montre, c'est mon terrain de jeu à moi. Yes. Après, chaque horloger indépendant va avoir une réponse différente. Oui. Yeah. So it's very personal to every single watchmaker. Philippe believes that for him, he likes to personalize, personalize some elements of the of the watch. So the the ratchet at the back of the you know of the movement for him is a, is a place where he likes he would like to customize. But he doesn't. He believes that the rest of the watch is his own. A playing field so he wants to keep it the way he has imagined it for such a long time yeah. uh, some other watchmakers they will build a watch for you for you you know completely based uh, I'm, th I'm thinking about Andre Berkus for example yeah, completely yeah. based on your idea they will do the whole thing uh, so it's really really personal and it becomes it becomes a it depends on the on the artist um, okay est-ce qu'il y aura un rabais spécial collaborateur? Merci au meilleur, au meilleur patron. And we, we finish this with a laugh. We, uh, Am Rocha is asking, is there a discount for, collab for friends and family, like Amr, Amr would say? All is possible. <laughs> Everything Just is possible. Just have to speak. Talk to me. Talk to Pietro.
Okay, bye bye. Thank you, Philippe. Thank you so much for your time. This has been uh, really inspiring, and we'll do it. We'll do it again. Let us know how the launch goes, and please, guys, if you have any question, let me know in French, yeah. in English, in Italian, in Spanish. We will uh, have. We will get Philippe's feedback. Uh, Philippe is a giver. Is some, somebody that likes sharing, likes the contact, and likes you know embracing uh, people's opinions and people feed feedback. So let's take advantage of this. Uh, thank you very much. We are Philippe Narbel's official retailers. You'll find the full listing of Philippe Narbel's work on our website. Very soon, the skeleton will be there as well. And get in touch with us anytime. We will bring Philippe on board again for a next interview. Thank you, Philippe. Be well. Bye bye.